Good morning, guys. It is Saturday. My brother's still asleep. This is usually the day that we use to film these tutorials for y'all. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk y'all through the whole process for those who are curious on how we set up. Hope y'all enjoy. But first, let's get some coffee. Get it, guys. What are you doing? Good job. We gotta film the day. Let's go. Just slippers on. I don't wanna cut hair. <laughs> yeah, what? I don't even have a haircut. We gotta cut our hair. True. Well, let's go cut our hair. What the hell? You already here? I've been waiting for you. Hello. Haircut. Let's go. But we do every single YouTube tutorial. We always pamper ourselves, so it's my turn to get a haircut. Let's get it. Hair done. My hair up as usual. Now it's time to get him cleaned up. How'd I do? I asked for a mid paint. Can and you gave me a mid paint. You gotta get ready. Alright, let's go. Alright, now that we're done with our haircuts, now it is time for us to set up the whole spot, set up the whole shop. That's pretty much done for this setup. That's what y'all see in the background. Now I'm gonna run y'all down the steps on how to set up the lighting and what we do about it. I'm gonna use four of these box lights just to get even light. So when I come over here, turn off the lights in the room. This is the light that you're seeing. This is the color tone that we produce. We got a brother working the computer, which is tethered to the camera. We got the microphone, the H4N, on a boom stand. And... Just waiting for the tenant to get here. Waiting for the model to get here. What do you want to do for the meanwhile? Uh... Sure. Work out our jaws. You want to work out our jaws? Yeah. <laughs> so we can look chiseled as... Alright guys, shout out to today's video sponsor. They go by the name of Chisel. It's these small silicone sponges that you place in the back of your mouth and just chew away. They help enhance your jawline. The link is in the description down below. Feel free to check them out. I hope y'all like them as much as I do. Now let's jump into this tutorial. What's going on Fitted Culture? I'm Adrian Barone. We got the homie Gwendolyn here. Today we're going to be running down the steps on how to do a number 10 on top with a shadow fade. And we're still going to add a little bit of texture. I hope y'all enjoy this tutorial and let's jump right into it. Why? My name is Adrian if you're watching Disney Channel. Oh, <laughs> Disney Channel. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that mini vlog that I did in the beginning. It was mainly geared towards those who are curious if they should start a YouTube channel. I highly encourage y'all do, man. And that's the reason I did it, to show what we use, to hope that it can help some of y'all. That's what we're here for. So the link is in the description to every single light and tool that we use. Feel free to check it out, guys. I hope it helped. So like I said, we are starting with the number 10 on top. And what I like to do with these higher guards, like a number 8 and a 10, is I grab the hair and I actually feed it into the clipper. It helps create that consistency with these longer guards. And something I always do is I go over it once a good time and then I recomb the hair in its natural position and then I go over it a second time guys. I hate when I see people and they just have a lot of stranglers at the top. This helps, like I said, create that consistency and give that smooth number all around. We're going to start with the number four guard lever fully open and this is just to clean out the canvas. We're gonna take that all around the parietal ridge and the crown area. And I'm gonna use my comb to kind of feed the hair into it. And I'm using the comb just to make sure I don't take this higher than I need to. And towards the back, I am coming up off the occipital bone. So make sure to do that. Again, this is just cleaning up the canvas so we can then set our first guideline. And you always want to get the hair to lay in its most natural position. So here I'm going to just wet that cowlick area. As you can see, it's sticking out. And then we're going to blow dry it using high heat. And then just close that cuticle with the cool shot. 
again this is a shadow fade so we're gonna start with the lever fully open no guard we're gonna create our first guideline at this temple peak area and i'm gonna slightly drop it behind the ear and take that all around make sure you are flicking up as you get towards the top you don't want these guidelines to be real deep in there as that will make it hard when we come back down and try to fade them out I definitely like this shadow fade look guys it's a real versatile look I highly recommend it to those even who are prone you know to ingrown hairs or anything like that as we're not taking the hair all the way down to the scalp Now with my number one guard lever still fully open, we're going to go ahead and create our second guideline. Make sure this guideline runs parallel to the one underneath and you are consistent with pulling out at the top. As you can see right here, I slowed it down for y'all. Those strokes need to be very soft guys. It's going to make your job a lot easier when you come back down. Now with my number two guard lever still in that fully open position, we're going to create our third guideline. Now with my number three guard lever still in that fully open position, we're going to continue the process and here I'm not going to say so much guideline, it's just continuing that process of cleaning up the sides, trying to get it to match to the top length. And for the final guard, it will be the number four lever still in that fully open position and here I'm just going to exaggerate that flick out motion just to make sure we're not digging in and giving her that faux hawk look. And all these steps guys are in the description below in case y'all want to screenshot them and follow along that way as well. As you can see we still got a little bit of weight at that parietal ridge so I'm going to just go ahead and attack it with thinning shears over comb. And you always want to comb right after on the same section that you just cut just so you can see how the hair lays. Alright, so by now you should have that first guideline that we created with the lever fully open. The second that we created with the number one guard fully open. We're going to attack that one and work our way down. With my one and a half guard, we're going to close the lever just slightly, putting it in that three fourths position. It's somewhere between halfway open and fully open. And using mainly the corners of the clipper, we're going to attack that top guideline, guys. And take your time with all these steps, guys. I like to use all these steps that I'm laying out as a foundation. At the very end, I still do come back and do any touch-up work. Now with my half guard lever still in that 3 fourths position, we're going to attack the last line, which is a line that we created with no guard lever fully open in the very beginning. And this guard does create a faint line right above it, but do not take this step any higher as we are going to come back right now with the one guard and clean that up. You can see right here, this is what I'm talking about. It still left a little dark area towards the top, but that's alright, we're going to come right back. So like I mentioned, now we got the number one guard lever still in that three fourths position. We're going to attack that faint line that that half guard created. 
aside from the touch up work guys that's pretty much it for the fade i did do a small taper on her sideburns and the neckline but i apologize i don't know what happened to our camera it shut off i'm sorry we didn't capture that for y'all here i'm just trying to tune in using the very fine fine corners of the clipper and like i said i do the touch up work and here all i needed to do was the one and a half guard started with the lever fully open and just touched up any dark spots and since it's still a good length on top i'm just gonna go ahead and add texture and when i add texture i like to damp the hair not so much soak it just so i can see the texture as we're cutting it point cutting is a go-to technique that i always use creating these peaks and valleys guys creating this inconsistency in the hair is what's going to give you that nice rough texture just taking small sections at a time and working my way back and just be wary of the edges guys don't get too close you don't want to cut and have these small hairs just poking out to the side in this direction Now when you get to the cowlick area, I like to cut more upright and do a fine, fine texture just again so we don't have those hairs sticking out. Adding a small line on the side just to give it a little pop. Now to bring out the texture in the hair using a matte pomade. All you need is about a dime size and really emulsify it guys. Make sure there are no clumps in your hands and do this kind of shoe shine motion on the top where you're just kind of going over it it's going to help make that texture pop in case y'all forgot this was the before and boom here's the after guys a shadow fade with a number 10 on top and we still added texture i hope you enjoyed this tutorial guys let us know down in the comments below what y'all would like for us to do next as always thank y'all so much for tuning in guys till next time peace